What is happening, YouTube? Cowboy here. Welcome back to Monster Hunter World, and this is my hunting horn build, the Boopin' Dude. Now, the hunting horn is considered by many to be a multiplayer-oriented or uh, support weapon, if you will, because the idea here is we play songs, and those songs buff both us and the other hunters we're hunting with. However, despite that, the hunting horn is capable of doing great amounts of damage in addition to buffing everybody. It boasts excellent, excellent exhaust and KO potential, very similar to the hammer, and to be honest, just about any hunting team in the game will always appreciate having a good duder along. So here is the build in full. Uh, this build in particular is oriented towards the Bagel Goose or alternatively the Dogogama hunting horns. I would not suggest using it with other hunting horns besides those two. But to learn about what we picked and why, make sure to stay tuned. So before we jump into the overview of everything, let's cover some basic combos. Whereas most weapons, there's you know kind of a build up and a DPS type combo. The hunting horn, your combos are all listed right in the top right. You can see a number of different songs listed. And the basic idea is as we play these songs as we go through those notes they'll fall into a queue when i hit triangle here you notice how recovery speed ended up dropping down a notch and that means that that is now in our queue to be played now health recovery is in that notch and you can notice i can hit right trigger with triangle or circle or by itself to play any of these songs however if i just press right trigger it'll go through and play all three of the songs additionally when the songs are about to be finished playing you can hit right trigger again to perform an encore doing a big amount of damage as well as playing those songs again and in some cases buffing them further. As you can see right there, recovery speed got extended and attack up large went up to attack up extra large. Uh, additionally, you can notice this visually because up in the top right, the first time you play a song, the song will be highlighted in green. The second time you play it, it'll be highlighted in purple. Ideally, you want all of your buff-related songs to be highlighted in purple at all times. That means you're getting the maximum effectiveness out of it. As for playing our songs, there's a couple different things we can do to get our songs out faster. The first is getting a free note in during our circle attack. As you can notice, I have a triangle and circle attack in my queue, despite not actually performing that note, which looks like this. But what you can do is, while you're in that forward circle, when it's coming around on the back end, right now, you hit the button, you can see how a free note will just go in. So keep that in mind, anytime you're doing a circle attack, you can get a free note. Uh, alternatively, if you pull backwards as you hit, you can do a quick stab with the bottom end of the hunting horn, also getting a note in faster. So for example, if I'm trying to go for the, the circle attacks, which we know are a little bit slower, I can go boop to get that one in, and then go into that, and then get that. So right there, I just played recovery speed while only actually doing two real attacks. I got the free note in off the circle, and I got the quick jab to play the second triangle and circle note. Now the last thing I want to touch on is chaining songs. So, for example, we just played, oh, here, we, uh, just to, to show it in full, I'm going to play the full combination for recovery speed here. Which is triangle, triangle, or triangle, circle, triangle, circle, circle, and triangle. Now, the last note in our queue is a triangle. From here, if I go circle, triangle, circle, triangle, it'll go into attack up, despite not having to play that full song. So, the point I'm making here is you can chain songs off the last attack of a song that's fallen into your queue. Uh, the final thing I want to touch on is when you are playing your songs, keep in mind the direction that you're going to be duding. If I hold forward, for example, it'll kick things forward like that and then start playing the songs. If I pull back on it, you'll notice how I do an attack and kind of go backwards and then go forward again and start playing the songs. And it's important that you keep in mind what kind of direction you're going with your dudes. Each direction does something different. Going forward, similar to the back, you'll notice how I do multiple attacks there. And this is important because if you simply, you know, just to, to show the difference here, if I go through the same exact song there and I just hit right trigger and I play it without any directional input, you notice I just do a quick swing and then I start playing it. For the encore, two swings and I start playing it. And if you remember when I pulled back and pushed forward, I ended up doing like four to five different hits. So when it comes time to push, play your dutes, when it comes time to, you know, get your dutin on, uh, especially in the case of the encore, make sure to use a directional input. This also works going sideways. You can see that going sideways, I did a swing there and I jumped on over to the side. From here, let's say I want to back up. 
see how I went into three attacks there, and then I'm playing the song from a safer distance. So now that we've gone through the basics there, um, one other thing, there's there's really no go-to combo for just damage with the Hunting Horn. You know, right here, it's a strong combo when enemy is vulnerable. Circle, forward, circle, triangle, triangle, circle, forward, and, and, and triangle. You know, I don't really do that shit at all, to be honest. Just to, to show you that combo, it's not really anything all that potent. It's just going to swing, it's going to do a swing, and then it's going to go ahead and smash. It's just, you know, rotating through your basic attacks. Um, you could basically accomplish more just, you know, keeping your songs up. So don't worry about doing a straight, you know, damage combo. More importantly, focus on playing your songs and keeping those maximized. And with this Hunting Horn in particular, any downtime we have is basically going to be cycling through our health recovery song, which is just triangle, triangle, circle, triangle, triangle, circle, and just infinitely looping this so that we have triple health recovery up on cue so that at any time we can start playing the songs and basically heal everybody on up to full. Like this. So, having showcased everything, let's jump on into the build in particular, show you what we picked and why. And the first thing I'm going to point out here, of course, is the Hunting Horn, and that is the Basil Ride Rook Slayer. Now, this is the Bagel Goose Hunting Horn, and I tested a lot of different Hunting Horns when I was creating this build, and ultimately I chose this one mainly because it has the capability of White Sharpness, it also has Blast, it has two gem slots, but most importantly, the song choices are excellent. Every single horn is basically going to have self-improvement. This has attack up large, which is very, very desirable. On top of that, we got recovery speed large, which, while not being like, oh my god, that's so awesome, it does help everyone. But more importantly, the health recovery small is fantastic. And that's because of what you just saw there. We're able to play three health recovery smalls, play through the series of them, then play an encore, and it ends up healing for quite a significant amount. So because of that, I found the Basil Ride Rook Slayer to be probably the best all-around hunting horn for both team play and solo, where you're going to be putting out excellent damage, as well as providing excellent support to the team. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Dogo Gama Horn is another excellent choice, while not having as much damage or as much blast as the Basil Ride Rook Slayer. Uh, we do gain access to attack up large, health boost large, wind pressure negation, and defense up large. So we're getting the health boost, the defense, and the wind pressure worked in with this buff at the cost of the healing. But if you want a more buff-oriented horn, this is actually a pretty decent horn to go with. Uh, aside from that, some other horns that I tested were the Teostrus horn, the Xeno horn, and then more recently, I actually tested the Deep Barrow horn from uh, Devil Joe, which actually has identical songs to the Gamma horn, but to be perfectly honest... I cannot stand the Deep Barrow. It's just, instead of playing a song, it just goes wow, 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 and, you know, as a duder, it completely ruins the rhythm of the dude for me. It's it's like a very deep, non bassy meow, I guess. I don't know how to describe it. What was that? It's like an earthy meow coming out of a cat in heat. I think I'll pass. So... The Basil Ride Rook Slayer is our go-to. Moving on from there, we got Attack Charm 3. Now, I know you're thinking, hold up, Hunting Horn is more of a support weapon. Why am I running Attack Charm? You know, I don't need an Attack Charm. And that's because, at the end of the day, you're not just some basic bitch who's going to stand in the back of the choir room playing songs. You're going to be up front, in that monster's face, and making him hear the sound of your people as you jam out inside of his eardrum. And to that extent, we're going to be bolstering our abilities with Attack. Moving on from there, Nier Gigante Helm Beta. Uh, pretty standard choice here. This thing has two points of maximum might, which are an excellent pickup with the Hunting Horn. Uh, the only time we use stamina is during a dodge, so you should look at this as just a permanent 20% affinity, basically. And we get two level 1 decoration slots. Dobermail Beta, getting us a little attack boost, as well as a level 3 gem, which we're going to need for handicraft. The Kaiser Van Braces Alpha, picking up those two points of weakness exploit as well as a level one dent gem slot there. Kaiser Coil Alpha, picking up our third point of weakness exploit as well as two points in blast attack. 
And then lastly, the Dober Greaves beta for two more points in attack boost as well as another level one decoration slot. And when we go and we pull all of this together, here is what we have. With the Bezel Ride Work Slayer in particular, we have two slots. One of those, ideally, we should dedicate to a Sharp Jewel, and one to a Mighty Jewel. Moving down from there, we're going to have three different Drain Jewels slotted, one Blast Jewel, and then, as I mentioned, that Handicraft Jewel. And pulling this all together, we get Attack Boost at level 7, we have Blast Attack at level 3, we have Weakness Exploit at level 3, Stamina Thief at level 3, Maximum Might at level 3, Handicraft at 1, and Protective Polish at 1. Now, going through everything we picked and why, a lot of this is pretty straightforward. Attack boost 7, obviously, we're just looking for damage. Blast attack, because both the Basil Ride as well as the Dogogama Hunting Horn have blast element, and this is going to just help to increase the buildup of that even more. Weakness exploit's kind of a no-brainer here. We're hitting weak points, it's 50% affinity. Stamina thief, because Hunting Horn innately has excellent exhaust potential, so we're looking to further augment that. Maximum Might, because this is going to be another 30% affinity while we're just standing still playing our songs. One point of Handicraft, because as you can see, that puts us just into that threshold for white sharpness. And then, of course, Protective Polish, just to help maintain that white sharpness. Now, if you wanted an even more aggressive-oriented build, you could, of course, swap the drain out and uh, pick up some grinder gems instead, ensuring you only got to sharpen it once to maintain that white sharpness. But honestly, I'm so busy playing songs most of the time, and usually I find that the protective polish and the damage boost from increasing everyone's attack is enough that I can get through at least white and blue before I'm going to have to sharpen my weapon again in a battle. And that's really all there is to this build. I find it to be incredibly effective. Um, initially when I started playing Hunting Horn, I didn't even really like this horn that much, because I was like, man, I feel like all I'm doing here is just, you know, I play attack and then I do damage and I heal. But at the end of the day, in both the solo runs I did, as well as the multiplayer runs I did, I found the Basil Ride Work Slayer to be probably the most effective horn, quite simply because when you're doing damage and you're tossing out those heals, your teammates don't have to put away their weapons to chug a potion. No one has to put away their weapons and drop a life powder. You are single-handedly supporting your entire team of hunters while also doing massive amounts of damage on that monster's face. And on top of that, I mean, let's be honest, looking at this hunting horn, the designs it has on it, it's pretty badass looking. Like, I would say this is probably one of the better looking horns aesthetically, and it has a pretty cool drum beat when you end up playing music with it. So either way, guys, make sure to stay tuned, and we will show you what this build is capable of in just a moment. So in an effort to keep some variety in these weapon showcase hunts, we're going to be going after a double hunt today with Rataban and Great Giros. Now Rataban does have a weakness to blast. Uh, Great Giros, I believe, is either a one or a two star, nothing special. Um, but both should be pretty decent targets to showcase the hunting horn against. Obviously, a lot of people are probably going to be like, well, why didn't you fight an Elder Dragon? This can't kill dra Elder Dragons. And honestly, guys, like, I don't want to just kill Elder Dragons in every single build showcase because then that would get kind of repetitive. And, you know, no one wants to watch me fight the same damn monster over and over again. I actually considered doing Devil Joe, but it's not so much that Devil Joe is difficult as he just has an enormous health pool, and that would have easily put this video close to, like, a 30 minutes. So I don't want to go for that, but... Let's Whitstone, put on our rock steady, get to the boopin'. So, of course, we're gonna sharpen right before the fight starts to get that protective polish on. And you'll notice one of the things I did there, I got the free note in off the circle, and then I went for a quick jab. And this is because I wanna get attack up as fast as possible. Before I start playing anything else, I want to tack up, because, you know, that's just going to be uh, that much more as I'm playing. Um, as for doing damage, honestly, the most of your damage is going to come from doing those encores. Those encores are your, your heavy hitters, uh, more so than your actual horn attacks. Baby. 
Now, an important thing to mention with the hunting horn is, as I mentioned back in the overview, uh, you have both KO and exhaust damage. The hunting horn naturally has a decent amount of exhaust, but that exhaust damage will turn into KO damage when we're hitting the head of the monster. So if you're sitting here attacking the body, it's going to be uh, exhaust damage that you're doing. If we're booping it right in the head, it'll be KO. So just keep that in mind when you're attacking the monster is, you know, basically where you attack will matter. Another thing you'll notice there, I was able to play just one song and roll out early to start playing another one. If you want, you can actually do this to, you know, basically chain play songs. But the downside of this is you're losing the encore. Not happy. But it doesn't matter because he's dead. Now, before you're like, holy crap, he just, you know, shit all over that Rataban, do keep in mind that because this is a double hunt, of course, the monster does have a reduced health pool. I mentioned this back when we did the double Diablos video, but it is worth mentioning. You know, it's not like the hunting horn is the god of all weapons and it murders all monsters in three minutes. It's, you know, they do have a smaller health pool. But even then, I think it did a pretty beefy job. You know, he was getting ready to run there, and the hunting horn was just like, no, you're not. And you can see we managed to, uh, we went through our white sharpness, of course. We only had a pinch of that. Um, we have about half of our blue left, so not too bad. If that had been a uh, full health Rataban, we might have had to sharpen once. And this was also something that I kind of touched on back in the overview video, but I find that for the most part, I can get away with... You know, I can beat on the monster long enough that when the time comes that I actually have to sharpen, the monster is retreating. So it's an easy sharpen. Question is, where... you know that is no little Jiros. Where is your father at? Tell me where he is. There he is. Alright, so, similar to before, before we engage, go ahead and get that Protective Polish on. Because we are fighting an Alluvium, of course, we're going to put on our Vitality Mantle here. More than anything, just to stop the Alluvium build. Now, another thing which I didn't mention before is when it comes to playing songs, always try to play a multi-note song as opposed to just playing... Uh, you know, like the movement speed up, the self-improvement, basically. And it's because when you play this, you actually do less attacks. For example, if I do the, the Encore, you notice I just did one swing, and then I went into playing it. So, it is worth noting that the, uh, the self-improvement does play not as, as potent of an Encore as the other songs do. Feel the sound of my people! As I mentioned, even though we can stack songs, if we just, just mash on that right trigger, you know, we can keep going through them. And right there, that'll allow us to play a song and then go straight into playing the next song. And since that's going to be our damage, and we weren't worried about, you know, healing for a massive amount or getting the buffs up, was a better decision to do that versus just playing all three in succession. Because it's going to play all three, it's going to get all three songs out, but you're only going to do the damage from playing one of those songs. But yeah, I mean, Great Giro's basically dropped like a sack of shit bricks, you know? Rataban dropped like a sack of shit bricks. And given these aren't the highest tier monsters, you know, it's it's not much farther off when you're fighting other things as well. Uh, in particular, Kushala Deora, this does pretty well against that, despite 
you know, not having uh, the anti-wind pressure, which is nice against him, Blast just tears through him, and you don't have to worry about the harder parts of him because you're working with a blunt weapon as opposed to a sharp. But either way, guys, that is going to be my hunting horn build. Um, some closing points here, as I mentioned back towards the start, if you want a more buff-oriented horn, the Dogo Gama horn is a pretty decent choice to run this with. You can literally just swap that horn in, um, and you know, you're getting attack, defense, health, and a little bit of wind pressure on there. Uh, aside from that, keep in mind that this build is very much oriented for blast horns. If you want to use this build and you want to adapt it to other horns, I would suggest at a bare minimum swapping out the leggings for something else, probably near Gigante for the attack as well as a gem slot, uh, and you could adapt that pretty easily. But either way, thanks for coming by. hope you guys enjoyed the build, and we will see you very soon with the hammer build.